Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Quote of the day. Today is your opportunity to build the tomorrow you want. Today, the topic of my presentation is food adulteration and food fortification. And I am presenting it under supervision of Professor Dr. Sarah Abzal. Learning outlines are food adulteration and its types, common adulterants and their hazards, co uh, control approach of food adulteration, food fortification, commonly fortified foods, advantages and disadvantages, and recent advan uh, advances. Learning objectives. At the end of presentation, uh, the participants will be would be able to describe different aspects of food adulteration and food fortification. Food adulteration. Food adulteration means anything adding or subtracting with food, making it injurious to health. This adulteration may be done intentionally or unintentionally. Intentional adulteration is a criminal act and punishable offense or the process of lowering the nutritive value of food either by removing a vital component or by adding substances of inferior quality. Types of adulteration. There are three types of adulteration, intentional, metallic, and incidental adulterants. Intentional adulterants. Intentional adulterants are sand, marble chip, stone, mud, chalk, powder, water, mineral, oil, and coal tar dyes. These, this adulteration causes harmful uh, effects on the body. Metallic contaminations include arsenic from pesticides, lead from water, and mercury from effluents of chemical industries, tin from cans. And incidental adulterants are pesticide residues, tin from can, droppings of rodents, larvae in foods, metallic contamination with arsenic, lead, mercury can also occur incidentally. Pests such as rodents and insects intrude into the food at high degree and produce filth in the form of excreta, bodily secretions, and spoilage through microorganisms. <clears throat> The most common incidental adulterants are pesticides, DDT, and marathon residues present on the plant products. Uh, now, there are three ways that is, replacement, complete or partial replacement of a food ingredient or valuable authentic constituent with less expensive substituent with the intention of circumventing on origin and false declaration of the process. Addition, addition of small amounts of non authenticated uh, substances to mask inferior quality ingredient. Removal of authentic and valuable constituent without purchaser's knowledge. Now, these are the common adulterants and their harmful effects. In milk, commonly used adulterants are unhygienic water, chalk powder, soap powder, starch, hydrogen peroxide, and urea. Harmful effects are food poisoning, heart problems, cancer, vomiting, nausea. In coffee powder, tamarind seed and shikori powder commonly used and harmful effects are diarrhea, stomach disorder, giddiness, joint pain. In uh, turmeric powder, commonly used adulterants are yellow aniline dye, non-permitted colorants like metanil yellow, and their hazards are carcinogenic and stomach disorders. <clears throat> In sugar, commonly used adulterants are chalk powder and harmful effects is stomach disorders. Ghee. In ghee, uh, commonly used adulterant is ghee essence that is used in cheaper oils and passed off as pure ghee. This type of ghee will not solidify like normal ghee. It may also have that crisp, uh, grainy texture of pure ghee. Olive margin or lard added to butter. Heart, health effects are cancer, acute perineal failure. The argument oil used to adulterate ghee and butter is highly toxic. It causes a disease known as dropsy. Water fluid collecting in some parts of the body is the main symptom. It affects the normal functioning of the body. It may also paralyze the limbs. In chili powder, adulterants are chili, uh, Sudan red, red big powder, great sand dirt, non permitted color, sawdust, or used dry papaya seeds to obtain the uh, required color. Uh, health effects are stomach disorder, Sudan dye is carcinogenic. Uh, in green chilies, green peas, and other vegetables, commonly used adulterant are malachite bean. It is used to accentuate the bright, glowing green color of the vegetables, and other is argument seeds that are used to add bulk and weight that is a colored dye. Harmful effects are carcinogenic for humans if consumed over a long period of time. 
in uh, turmeric powder mix spices saffron uh, the commonly used adulterant are metanil yellow a non permitted color uh, it is commonly used as adulterant in food items like laddu tar dal and turmeric health effects are tumor and cancer in honey commonly used adulterants are sugar jaggery corn syrup health effects are obesity diabetes mellitus eyes and nerve damages adulteration on bakery items and dairy products may have tremendous effects on a child's health such as cream filled foods cereal cream sauces causes increased salivation abdominal cramp vomiting and prostration improperly processed milk and canned meat may cause food poisoning and abdominal pain now these are the reasons for adult patient uh, main reasons are to earn more profits to increase the weight adult print uh, is added to increase volume of trade by showing lower prices when supply is less than demand to cut down the product cost to meet the market competition shortage of authentic ingredients at affordable prices shortage of qualified personnel and no updation of processing techniques inadequate knowledge on the consequences and associated food safety risks lack of awareness and updation of the information on the adulteration related food safety outbreaks now a uh, food adulteration control approach first is uh, to regulatory authorities now to save ourselves and our descendants we have to fight all together against these ill trends of adulteration government should also take serious action with tougher law against these those culprits we all should make aware the general people about the serious health impact of taking adulterated food stipulating the practically feasible rules requirements and regulations on the adulterants and updating them at regular intervals strict monitoring of the implementation regular interactions with the industry to understand their concerns industry to feel more ethical and more responsibility as food business operator to supply and serve whole some food to the society regular updates on the process and allergen related outbreaks in the world risk assessment for all the ingredients additives processing aids and processing techniques frequent testing of vulnerable ingredients additives and processing aids scientific community to develop validated simple quick and authentic test procedures to scan the ingredients additives and processing aids for positive clearance to share the knowledge with the statutory bodies and industry uh, consumers and users proper understanding of the adulteration issues to know difference between the natural and aesthetic attributes that is texture appearance and taste of food and accepting the natural ones to the extent possible it is better to avoid adulterated cool drinks instead you can have any fresh fruit juice and tender coconut food additives food additives are chemical substances added to processed foods to enhance or retain qualities attributes such as texture physical properties taste flavor etc to control the spoilage and enhance shelf life of the processed foods all additives are not adulterants if present within the specific limits and once exceeded the limits they become significant adulterants and can cause serious health hazards to the consumers all additives are not adulterants until reported outbreak of food safety issues occur Now, general food additives are antioxidants, emulsifiers, acid regulators, anti-caking agents, flavor enhancers, artificial sweeteners. Functions of food additives. They there are five functions of food additives. They give the food a smooth and consistent texture, improve or preserve the nutrient value, maintain the wholesomeness of the foods. Control the acid-base balance of foods and provide leavening, provide color and enhance flavor. Now these are the key facts about food additives. Uh, food additives. These are the substances uh, that need to be checked for potential harmful effects on human health before they can be used. The Joint FAO WH Expert Committee on Food Additives (JACFA) is the international body responsible for evaluating the safety of food additives. Only food additives that have been evaluated and deemed safe by JACFA on the basis of which maximum use levels have been established by the Codex. Elementary as commission can be used in foods that are traded internationally. 
health hazards of food additives. The effects of food additives can be immediate or long term. Immediate effects include common reactions like urticaria, runny nose, headache, asthma, GIT disturbances like diarrhea, infections, bleeding, hyperactivity, irritability, contact dermatitis, and skin eruptions. Long-term effects include damage uh, of organs like birth defects and cancer, bre uh, breaking of teeth and adverse effect on the lining of the digestive tract, anemia, cardiac arrest and stomach or intestinal cancer, various abnormalities of bone, eye, skin and lungs. Now coming to our second topic, food fortification. According to WHO, it is the process whereby nutrients are added to foods in relatively small quantities to maintain or improve the quality of the diet of a group, a community, or a population. Now, these are the uh, vehicles for fortification with combination of micronutrients. In edible common salt, it is uh, commonly uh, fortified with micronutrients like iron and iodine. In wheat, in whole wheat flour and maida, maida it is uh, iron, folic acid, calcium, zinc. In rice, iron, folic acid, calcium, zinc are used as micronutrients. In vegetable oil, it is commonly fortified with vitamins A and D. Milk and dairy products are fortified with vitamin D, A, iron, folic acid, calcium, omega-3, 6 fatty acids. ICD supplementary foods include iron, folic acid, calcium, zinc, and sugar, uh, it is fortified with vitamin A. Now, criteria for fortification. Uh, it is uh, fortified, uh, what uh, the criteria for fortification are nutrient deficiency should be widespread. The vehicle food, mu food must be consumed by the target group. The high consumption of fortified food will not lead to toxicity. Addition of micronutrients should not change the taste, color, flavor, texture, and shelf life of the food item. The item of food should be centrally controlled and monitored. The cost of fortification should be affordable. Approaches for arriving at fortification levels. National recommended daily allowance of nutrients, prevalence of deficiency in the region, per capita consumption of food vehicle to be fortified, current dietary habits of the population, stability of the nutrient in the food being fortified, and chemical sources. Advantages of food fortification are providing certain nutrients simultaneously in the same food improve the utilization of certain like vitamins and minerals, for example, vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron, providing nutrients to the regular food supply and distribution system reduces cost. Disadvantages. Shelf life of fortified milk cereals is reduced. Regular quality control is essential. Prolonged cooking of fortified food leads to 90% loss of vitamin C. Fortified commodity is more expensive. Future challenges of food fortification. Uh, these are create community awareness about benefits of food fortification. Private sector governments and international agencies need to make commitments for investing in food fortification. Ensure increased availability of fortified foods to the vulnerable groups of populations. Governments and international agencies should encourage fortification by way of tax concessions or duty rebates. Regulatory authorities to recommend uniform food fortification guidelines to the group countries. Develop technologies that will produce the futuristic food. Now coming to recent advances. Uh, uh, these are the guidelines that are published by WHO on food fortification with micronutrients. The main purpose of these guidelines is to assist countries in the design and implementation of appropriate food fortification programs. They are intended to be a resource for governments and agencies that are currently implementing or considering food fortification and a source of information for scientists, technologists and the food industry. Pakistan's long-standing burden of malnutrition. More than half of the women and children in Pakistan lack adequate levels of essential micronutrients such as iron, folic acid, vitamin A, and vitamin D. <clears throat> Poor nutrition and micronutrient deficiencies in childhood have profound effects on immunity, growth, and cognitive development. According to recent estimates by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, 37.5 million people in Pakistan are not receiving proper nutrition 
punishment. The country lo loses 3% of its GDP every year due to a high burden of malnutrition, which unfortunately has not changed much over the last four decades. Now, the, uh, <clears throat> there is a uh, food forti uh, fortification program. The, it is a five-year investment by the UK government, uh, and it aims to support the government at federal, provincial, and district level to support the wheat flour and edible oil or ghee industries through technical assistance. It is a collaboration with Mott McDonald's, and it is implementing a large-scale food fortification program in 56 districts across Pakistan to support the national and provincial government's fortification efforts. Now, the impact of this collaboration is that it is increasing our reach. In 2019, this collaboration helped us to increase the total production of fortified edible oil and wheat flour in Pakistan ensured that more than 65 million people in the country had access to critical micronutrients. Uh, the impact was 70% functional mills fortifying wheat flour, 62.6 million people consuming fortified oil, and 2.5 million people consume fortified wheat flour. Uh, now it is a, a, a graphical representation, a representation showing that 96% of oil or ghee is fortified throughout the Pakistan, 97% in Punjab, 94% in Sindh, and 99% KPK, 87% in Balochistan, 94% in Islamabad. And uh, overall, 14% of the floor is fortified, out of uh, which in Punjab, it is 16% uh, floor is fortified, in Sane, 99% floor fortified, and in KPK, 14% of the floor is fortified. In Balochistan, 14% of floor is fortified, in Islamabad, 9% of floor is fortified. Now, benefits of fortified food. Research reports find that the key benefits of fortified foods are iron, it improves cognitive and learning abilities of children, increasing work performance of adults, reduces anemia in women, children, and adults. Folic acid, it reduces the chances of mental and physical disability in children. Folic acid is a crucial for proper brain function and plays an important role in mental and emotional health. Zinc, it improves growth, immune system, improves bone and teeth formation, provides minerals for brain and body, improves cognition and energy levels. Vitamin B12 maintains functions of the brain, improves maternal health and cognitive development. Uh, benefits of edible oil ghee fortified with vitamin A and D. Vitamin A improves vision and cures night blindness, healthy function of immune system, develops white blood cells, and vitamin D improves bones and muscle health. A uh, new global alliance brings food fortification to world's process. There is a line called Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition Press Release. For just pennies per person per year, the new Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition Gain plans to bring the benefits of foods fortified with vitamins and minerals and end micronutrient deficiency for the poor in developing countries, which can save millions of lives and prevent crippling conditions such as blindness and mental retardation. Gain will assist recipient countries in putting iron, iodine, vitamin A, folic acid, and other vitamins and minerals into everyday foods like salt, flour, oil, sugar, and soy sauce, depending on each nation's food habits. Research has demonstrated that fetal death, blindness, anemia, mental retardation, many common infections that kill the young and the weak are prevalent in developing countries uh, uh, simply because individuals lack adequate essential vitamins and minerals in their diets. One of the most successful programs has been the addition of iodine salt to prevent mental retardation and IQ loss. Some 70% of all salt now consumed worldwide is iodized. The GAIN initiative is going to make a real difference in people's lives. For example, five to six years from now, children will not be going blind anymore in recipient countries that fortify foods with vitamin A. Now coming to uh, food adaptation, uh, these are the uh, articles or papers. Uh, uh, First is malpractices of milk adulteration with chemicals and its impact on nutritional status of preschool children in Peshawar, Pakistan. 
Here, a research was conducted in Peshawar uh, to investigate contributing role of chemical adherence in fresh milk on nutrition status of under five children. Total 203 households having under five years children were randomly selected. Fresh milk samples were randomly collected from the household and tested for the presence of chemical adherence. Children's nutritional status were assessed, taking measurements on weight, height, length, and uh, mid arm circumference. Children's nutritional status were assessed comparing the anthropometric measurements with WHO gold standards. Uh, then chemical adulterants including formaldehyde, boric acid, urea, and hydrogen peroxide were found in 77 of the milk samples or 38% of the milk samples. Children in the adulterated group consumed adulterated, that is the group that uh, consumed adulterated milk uh, for more than six months, has significantly lower body weight, made upper arms and appearance and weight for ACs for comparing with those in the non adulterated group. Uh, and there was significant association with that consumption of adulterated milk was among the risk factors for poor nutritional status. It was concluded that consumption of adulterated milk contributed significantly to the poor nutritional status of under five year children living in the study areas. Then there is another paper, qualitative analysis of milk adulterants in various samples of milk available in local market of Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, it was to perform the qualitative analysis of milk adulterants in various samples of milk available in local market of Lahore. An experimental study was conducted in Fast Lab. Uh, qualitative analysis of milk samples were performed and total nine samples were taken from three different varieties, fresh milk, pasteurized milk and tetra pack milk. All the milk samples contained urea by giving distinct yellow color on analysis. And it was concluded from the study that various samples of milk contained, uh, contained adulterants as urea, sorbitol, hypochlorite, cane sugar, and carbonate by giving distinct colors. Among the milk samples, pasteurized samples were having comparatively better results in context to qualitative analysis. <clears throat> Uh, then uh, there is contamination of red chili with aflatoxin B in Pakistan. A survey of red chili for contamination with aflatoxin was performed on different samples comprising whole crushed and powdered red chili collected from various stores located in the city of Karachi. After performing chromatography and confirmatory tests, it was found 66% of samples were contaminated with aflatoxin B1. And aflatoxin B1 is a potent hepatotoxic and hepatocarcinogenic genic mycotoxin produced by the aspergillus flavors group of fungi. It is also a mutagenic, teratogenic and causes immunosuppression in animals. Now coming to MCQ session. Staple foods such as cereal grains and rice might get fortified with this nutrient to prevent visual impairment. Vitamin D. Vitamin A. Yes, right answer is vitamin A. What was the original purpose of food fortification? To decrease the occurrence of nutrient deficiencies, to make foods easier to digest, to lower cholesterol, to increase absorption of nutrients in the digestive tract, to boost sales of processed food. To decrease the occurrence of nutritional deficiencies. That's the right answer is A. Which two diseases can be prevented by double fortified salt? Iron deficiency, anemia, night blindness, goiter, A and B and a and yes. B. Yes, right answer is A and B. Because in double fortified salt, uh, iron and iodine are used as fortification. So it is used to prevent the iron deficiency in immune butter. Green leafy vegetables are commonly adulterated with malachite green, shakri powder, argument salts, A and C or A and B. A and C. Yes, right answer is D, that is A and C. Pashikri powder is used as adulterant in coffee powder or tea. Fats and oils are fortified with which micronutrients? Vitamin A and D. A. Yes, right answer is yeah. vitamin A and D. The food fortification program is a five-year program invested by Dash government to support government's fortification efforts. US. Okay. Yes, right answer is B, it's UK. Mr. Ali observed the following when he uh, 
tested the uh, specific gravity of milk to check for hydration the specific gravity was lesser than that of pure milk he complained to the milk vendor in the next day check the specific gravity again this time it came in the range of the desired specific gravity can we be assured that this is pure unadulterated milk uh, the possible options are yes definitely no definitely unsafe maybe unsafe maybe safe none of the mentioned B. No, right answer is C. Maybe safe or maybe unsafe. The uh, explanation for this option is that we cannot be sure whether it is pure and adulterated milk because the specific gravity of adulterated milk uh, with water can be easily increased using other unseen adulterants such as urea, sugar, etc. So the right option is C. Red chili powder is commonly adulterated using aflatoxin B1. What are the possible health outcomes? Hepatic failure, B. hepatic carcinoma. A. What? Uh, yes, hepatic right carcinoma. Uh, right answer is E. Both hepatic failure and hepatic carcinoma. A and B are the right options. Food additives are chemical substances added to processed foods. Which of the following is not true about food additives? They are added to enhance taste of the food. They are added to retain physical qualities of food. They control spoilage of food. They are always injurious to health. D. Yes, my answer is D. Because uh, if they are given uh, more than the uh, specified quantity, then they are injurious to health. Now coming to our last MCQs, sodium aluminum sulfate is used to maintain texture of canned foods and vegetables. What could it be called? Food stabilizer, food additive, food adulterant or food fortificant? Food additive. Yes, it is uh, called food additive because it is used to maintain texture. And neither uh, uh, it is called adulterant or fortificant or food stabilizer. So this is the key. And these are the references. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Meha. A very nice presentation, especially about uh, food adulteration and food fortification. As we know that uh, one of the key strategy to improve the nutritional quality of the food and one of the four pillars of WHO as well as World Food Organization is to fortify and add uh, the things to enrich the existing food uh, in order to combat malnutrition. So a very nice presentation, however, there is always a room for improvement. And as the, this exercise is mainly for the critical appraisal, so I have few observations about it. Uh, as we know that the food fortification and enrichment, it is identified as the second important strategy out of four by World Health Organization in decreasing the incidence of nutritional deficiencies at the global level. However, you have not mentioned these four strategies by WHO and FAO that have been adopted. Second important observation is uh, you have uh, wonderfully described about the food fortification, especially about wheat. And uh, it is really uh, a matter of concern that in Pakistan, very few places are present where there is a fortification of wheat that is only about 16% in Punjab. Punjab where 50% of the population of Pakistan that is residing. If it is only 16%, then it is the matter of concern. The second uh, uh, important thing in this uh, food fortification of wheat is that uh, how the wheat is being fortified. Uh, you should mention whether it is iron or uh, folic acid or anything else that is being used for fortification because uh, it is basically the iron that is being used as a fortifier uh, for food uh, for wheat fortification. And uh, again, the same observation holds true when we come to fats and oils and ghee. 
as you have mentioned that the food fortification appears to be 99% in kpk uh, however it is uh, less than uh, about uh, 95 to 98% in punjab again the question is what are those vitamins that are being used for fortification we know that it is vitamin a and d but it should be the part of the presentation and what other things that can be considered for fortification that are not being used now but they can also be used in uh, uh, but they must be used in other words so the milk and milk products we know that there is a fortification with vitamin d and uh, the fortification with iron should not be used uh, in our previous uh, series of lectures we have emphasized this fact that whenever iron is used for fortification of milk, it is not only not absorbed, but also causes damage to the colon, causing uh, colitis in the uh, blood in the stools. And it is dangerous for the health. So the food, the food fortification items should also be recognized that what uh, should be the correct way of fortifying those products. In milk, vitamin D, it is being used and it should be used. However, iron should not be used. Similarly, we should also have other uh, like tea, beverages, cereals, and many other uh, things that can be uh, fortified and okay, that can enrich the quality of the food and uh, that can decrease the malnutrition in certain areas. Second, high-risk areas and high-risk population should be identified before having any uh, processing or the benefit in order to give the maximum advantage to the people who cannot afford those uh, natural products that contain those uh, important uh, vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, calcium, etc. Uh, so let's come to a deliberation. Uh, you have told us about different cancers and how they develop in uh, different situations. Uh, here, again, I would like to stress upon the 18th Amendment. After the 18th Amendment, it is under provincial control that food adulteration should be controlled and we have Punjab Health, uh, Punjab Food Authority that is being uh, governed by different policies and regulations and they are giving certain type of punishments to the people who are involved in adulteration. So the adulteration, it is so dangerous, it increases the risk of cancers and uh, it is uh, really something that is worrisome. Uh, we need to add criteria here. Again, I would request you to please, uh, you should add the criteria that how the adulterated food is being uh, judged on the criteria. For example, number one, it contains uh, any uh, poisonous substance that is injurious to health. It contains uh, the added poisonous like pesticide, uh, additive, color additive, animal, drug, etc. You have talked about color. But another important point is that the animals are given drugs like estrogens, etc. That can lead to polycystic ovarian disease. And uh, again, that is a matter of concern. Similarly, there are food additives that are actually you know, harming the health. They are uh, being used to preserve the texture, but they are dangerous to health. So they should be pointed out. It uh, uh, Another important point is that uh, when there is a unsafe, decomposed, putrefied, filthy substance where the food is being stored or prepared or processed before packaging, again, that can lead to uh, health hazard and adulteration. So the area where the food is being prepared, packed, uh, especially bakeries and uh, factories, food factories, they should uh, be free of insects, rodents, birds, infestation, etc. in order to uh, give the healthy food. That is why we have seen that Punjab Health Authority has sealed many bakeries, restaurants, etc. in order to decrease this harm. Next important point is that uh, whenever there is a dietary in ingredients that should be mentioned on the package so that uh, some people may be 
uh, having uh, certain diseases, chronic diseases or illnesses, and they are at the risk of uh, in having more potassium, sodium, uh, like in hypertension, or they have to restrict their diet for uh, only potassium, like in renal failure, uh, or they have to restrict their sugar content, for example, in diabetes, mellitus, obesity, etc. So the labeling of the food, that is of paramount importance. Again, the regulations, they are present for labeling the food, but they are, if omitted, again, that comes under food adulteration. If uh, the correct labeling is not present, if something that is present on the label, but it is not present uh, actually in that uh, uh, food, again, it comes under uh, adulteration. So this is very important aspect that has been missed about food labeling. It should also be included. Uh, another uh, important thing is about MCQs. Uh, if you please go to your MCQ number eight, please. Right. Uh, here again, red chili powder is formally adulterated using aflatoxin B1. What are the possible health outcomes? Whenever we are talking about MCQs, it is the single best type. We have to choose the best out of uh, this list. So uh, if uh, we go to the stem, it is very confusing that the possible health outcomes. So it is. Uh, it should be the best out of uh, this. As we know that red chili powder, first it will not causing hepatic failure. The hepatic carcinoma may lead to the uh, other important issues like hepatic